Hello everyone, welcome back to the way, 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 87% of you aren't subscribed. What are you waiting for? Get subbed now. Welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about some tips and tricks for the new Overwatch players out there to get you through and start climbing up those ranks. So let's get straight into it. First up, we have a little tip that maybe some of you didn't know about, especially some of my friends that are kind of new to the game, didn't know this, so far I'll include it in here. The payload uh, on on those maps where you capture a point and then you have to push a payload, it actually heals you a little bit. When you stand close to it, it does passive healing over time. It's not much, about 10 HP a second. So it's not much, it just shows how important it is to play around the objective to give you that additional healing especially when the enemy team uses an ultimate that extra hp there can save your life and make a big difference so on number two we have abilities that counter ultimates so it's important to understand how abilities and ultimates can interact and a lot of characters have the abilities which counter ultimates for example diva being able to use her matrix to swallow projectile ultimates such as zarya's grav or maze maze ice or even absorb most of Reaper's Wraith if you're placed in the right position. So therefore, knowing those interactions and being careful about what the enemy chooses as their picks and uh, trying to play around them and know when, they, when they've when they used those abilities so you can use yours. Another example would be seeing when Baptiste uses his lamp, the immortality field, can load up again after about 15 seconds. So when he's used that up, using the diva bomb, for example, would be a perfect time as the enemy, enemy team doesn't really have anything to protect themselves in, especially if they're in an open area. Next up, we have something that um, a lot of my players may not be used to and that being not being afraid to switch so if you choose your first pick and it's not really working out for the team you feel like you're not getting enough damage or healing enough as a support with the new addition of gaining 30 percent of your old back when changing heroes when you have over I don't know 50% or something there isn't that much of a drawback of changing when your team needs it if the enemy team is countering your fire with two hit scans then be a little bitch and switch to another hero overwatch is a very time sensitive game and if you can't get your all out in time whilst waiting to switch it could cost your team the round following up on the last point don't save your ultimates for a huge play of the game trying to kill the whole enemy team often getting a kill or two with your ultimate will win your team a fight and you shouldn't think that's wasteful especially with characters like anna who build up their ultimates quickly and nano beasting your tank just to save them in a team fight is much more than worth the while as it gives you a massive health boost there so this next one might sound a bit weird, but it's knowing when to die out. So it's important to analyze the play and knowing when a fight is lost. I often find teammates attempting to stay alive when the whole team is dead, which isn't always ideal as it costs precious time due to everyone else needing to regroup, wait for you whilst you respawn, which could be 7 to 10 seconds later and could be round costing. As if you only have, for example, like 10 seconds left on the clock and there's only 4 of you and you've just died when everyone else is ready to go, this, you know, 4v5 is going to be a tough fight. And therefore, it's ideal to just die with the rest of the team rather than trying to save your life in most occasions. So you're able to uh, go again as the whole team and hopefully win the point back. So as you climb the ranks, it's important to keep a mental note of enemy ultimates. That's something you should try and get used to early on and estimate when the enemy team has the ultimates ready. Especially when the enemy is playing the same character as you, that means that if you have your ultimate, it's more than likely the en enemy has it as well if they haven't used it already. If a particular ultimate counters yours, for example, like Transcendence or Lucio's Barrier and has the capability to cancel most ults by just giving allies more health, so keep an eye out for them if you're, for example, a Genji player and using your using Nano Blade when they can just pop Lucio's Barrier, it's important to keep an eye on that, that it, they can just cancel your ability. So if if you see them use it maybe use it in the next fight because you know they won't have it built up yet so yeah keeping that mental note can make a big difference in team next up if you're playing one of the support heroes like me most of the time it's key to remember that you're exactly that a support not healer of course one of the main ways to support your team is through healing and putting it as a priority at the beginning is important However, most characters are capable of supporting in other ways, such as Discord Orb on Zen and calling out who to focus, or using Lucio's speed boost to surprise the enemy and get into the back line. With most supports, it's usually the question of when to heal, but at the top level when you're climbing through the ranks, it's more often the question of when not to heal and try to 
help your team by taking out opponents through doing damage. Of course you have to think about your team comp as well. If your fellow support is playing Zen for example and you're insta-lock Kiriko because she's a god, you may have to focus on healing a bit more that game as Zen can't do as much healing as you and you kind of need to let him focus on doing the damage more and hopefully he does a good job. So remember be flexible and remember you're a support so try to do a little damage and often doing little combos, for example Kiriko where you heal, shoot a kunai and then heal again, you can do the same amount of healing but also get a little bit damage in in between so those little differences matter same with baptiste if you heal shoot heal kind of combos work really well so make sure you practice those and yeah remember keep supporting but my next tip is choosing a, a role and mastering them with over 34 characters in the game now a and a unique play style for each one it's a big ask to require you to master all of them that's why for me i think if you want to really climb up those ranks and have more fun and basically have more consistent games i think it's important to focus on one role you enjoy and focus on that obviously at the beginning make sure you try out all the heroes uh, whether that's tank damage or support and see what kind of play style you enjoy most this means using a couple of characters from that roster and understanding how to counter pick against what your opponents are choosing this could mean choosing a Zarya when the enemy team have an orisa or diva to harass the enemy fire if your dps are having a hard time in this game you have to be flexible in your picks and often your first pick may not be the one that your team needs and you have to adjust so make sure you learn kind of what characters counters which and be flexible to see what your team needs to be able to win. So my next tip is finding some pros or streamers who play your favorite characters or roles and learn some little tips from them. So recently I found it especially helpful to find players to watch and pick up tips and tricks from. My favorites include Six, that's C-Y-X on tank, Probably the number one ranked hog player, which I also play, but he's also able to adjust and play Zarya, Junker Queen, stuff like that, anything that your team needs. So it's really important to be able to play a mix of characters there. Uh, also, I've got Dafran for DPS, or J3 is also solid, so they're some of the best DPS players around. Uh, for support, for me personally, I regularly watch ML7, who plays Anna and more recently Kiriko as well, so some of the characters I play the most. And just watching a few games on YouTube or Twitch. Uh, whilst you're eating or you know kind of have a free moment it's always worthwhile and on certain different maps you may pick up something that you haven't seen before and you can use it in your own games that and those little differences if you the opponent team is playing Anna for example and you're also playing Anna having those little unfair advantages kind of things can make the difference between winning and losing so make sure you find some streamers who play the same role or even characters as you get to know them and maybe you'll learn something new there so lastly, for all that is great in this world, please, please, please join voice chat. Communication is everything in this game and those little callouts can make all the difference in the game. For example, if someone's low, often your DPS can follow up or if you want to combo ultimates such as Nanoblade, it's much easier to coordinate when everybody's talking. Even if you don't have a mic, just join in and listen to the calls it can make a big difference. You can just communicate with emotes to let your team know that you're listening and it's not often the better team that wins, rather the team who plays as a team more. All these tips before that come before, all these can be linked back to back to talking. For example, you know, being able to switch, maybe give an advice to another player. Make sure you join voice chat, please. Please. For the love of God. Please. That's all from me for now. If you're an old Overwatch dog like me, make sure you comment below any more tips you can think of. And make sure you like the video if you enjoyed. And if it was helpful for you, if you're a new Overwatch player, I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!